Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is implement simple drag and drop functionality to the sampler that we created in the last tutorial. So if you remember our last tutorial, we had a button that we had to hit that opened up a load dialog where we had to manually choose a file and that loaded the file. And in this one, we want to do like most samplers do where we can actually just take a f an audio file and just and just drag it on. So we have this uh, load a file. We can just take a file, drag it on, and now a file's loaded. We could actually play it. And that's what we're going to do for this tutorial. And it's a very common request that I've seen within the community. And I'm going to show you the most simple way to be able to do that. So we'll go ahead and close this out. And I just wanted to show you something very quickly before we get started. So uh, I have a mailing list where I'm showing people all the latest stuff that's happening in the world of audio programming. So new jobs, we have events that are happening around the world, courses and more. And if you want to sign up, you could just sign up here on my website is the audioprogrammer.com slash sign up. So sign up there and also be sure to join our discord group on uh, discord where we can actually uh, ask each other questions and help each other out with audio programming problems, talk about issues around audio programming. Uh, the link will be in the description. So I'm going to just reset my project here so we can get started. So here we are. So we have what we left off with in the last tutorial. So what we need to do is we need to first think about our actual drag and drop functionality. So luckily there are a couple classes in Juice for this. So if we go back to our Juice API here, we can actually just, uh, just go to our search and then we could just type drag and drop. And I'll, and I'll show you what uh, I was thinking here when I was, was first starting to do this. So there's, so, so as you can see, it gives us five targets here uh, that we could use for drag and drop. And the first one that I thought was going to be the class that I needed was this drag and drop container class. Sounds like something that you would want for uh, if you're trying to drag and drop something onto your plugin, right? So looking into the documentation here says enables drag and drop behavior for a component and all the subcomponents sounds like exactly what you want. And then reading further into the documentation, uh, we can see here at the bottom, it says, note, if all you need to do is respond to files being drag and dropped from the operating system onto your component, you don't need any of these classes. You can do this by simply overriding file drag and drop files dropped. Okay, so, so then just going over here, we can see that we have this file drag and dropped target class, and this is an abstract class, so we don't need to create an object of this. We just need to inherit from this class to give us this functionality, and that's what we're going to do first. So going over to our editor, which is where our UI is, right? So this is going to be our UI checking to see if a file has been dragged onto it, and if it's a valid file, then we will load it. And so that first has to happen from the UI. The UI has to check and see if something's being dragged onto it. So that's the reason why we're in the plugin editor that handles the UI side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to inherit the file drag and drop target. Okay, so this that means that this component, this audio processor editor, uh, the, the background, is now a file drag and drop target, okay? So it's going to be listening out for our, uh, f if files are going to be drag dragged onto it. Now, if we look back into our documentation, we can see that there are two pure virtual methods. So pure virtual means that we need to actually implement these before the class, before our, our project will actually build. So if I try to build right now, what we'll see is that we get a crash and the build fails and it says unimplemented pure virtual method. Okay, so these equal zeros in the documentation let us know, hey, these are what you need to implement in order for this class to work. So here I can just say 
is interested in file drag, and this is of return type Boolean, so we need to return a true or false. I'm just going to straighten out my files, my code here, make it nice and uh, congruent across the whole code base here. I'm going to mark this override because we're overriding a method from file drag and drop target. And now we have another pure virtual method, files dropped. I'm just going to copy this here. And this is a void return type. And I'm going to mark this override as well. And this is because we need to implement these methods ourselves. Okay. So now we go over to our CPP file and we have void hello sampler audio processor editor, which is the class that we're in, and then is interested in file drag. And then it takes a, the argument is uh, it will look when, so, so this automatically calls when the, when the user actually takes their mouse and they actually are trying to drag files onto it, what it does is it will give us a string array. So it returns an array of strings of all the paths of all the files that we try to drag onto it. Okay. By the way, when you have this autocomplete, if you just hit enter, it will actually just do that rather than you needing to have to retype it yourself. And it took me forever to uh, actually figure that out. Okay. So we're going to do that. And this actually takes, so this is a Boolean. Okay. And since it's a Boolean, we know that it needs to return true or false, or we get this warning control reaches end of non void function. Okay. So for now we'll just return false. And now we're okay for that function. Then we have the other function. I think it was called, oh, I forget what it was called. Files dropped. Okay, and it takes these arguments. Once again, you can just hit enter there. That will just automatically fill those in. I'm just gonna put this here like that. And now we're good to go here. So what's gonna happen is that this is gonna, when we're trying to drag a file onto our plugin, this is going to call, it's going to uh, call the is interested in file drag. So what we wanna do here is we actually wanna see if the files that we're trying to drag onto it are valid files. So if it's a sampler, we want audio files, right? Those are the type of files that we actually wanna check and make sure that it's an audio file so that we can actually load it up. So what we can say is if, so, so what we need to do first is this is a string array. So it's an array of strings. So what we could do is we could traverse through the, this array of strings and we can see if it's an MP3 or if it's a wave or if it's an AIF file. And if it is, then we want to say, Hey, we're interested in these files, right? So we could say we could use a ranged for loop here and say for auto, we'll just call it file in files. Files is the name of our string array. Then we could just say if, and then each file is going to be a string, right? So if we, so if I say, uh, if file, and then there's actually a method here called contains. So it looks through the actual string and it sees if it contains this particular text that we were looking for. So we might want to say dot wave. We want to see if it's dot wave perhaps, or if it's a dot MP3 or if it's a dot AIF. And what do we want to do if it is one of these files? We want to return true, right? Because then we're saying, hey, the user's dragging a WAV file onto here. We want to be interested in what 
the user is trying to drag onto here because that's a valid file that they might be trying to load into the sample, the, the sampler. Then we have this logic files dropped. So this calls when the file is actually dropped, when the user releases the mouse and says, hey, I want to try to put this into the sampler. So what we could do is we could say for them, once again, we're just going to traverse through our string array of files. These are our absolute paths. Then if we, we could say if we're interested in if it's one of our valid file types. So we'll just put our string array in here for our argument. Then here, we don't have anything implemented yet, but we could just say, hey, load this file, load this path, right? So that's our logic for the actual dragging and dropping there. And now all we need to do is this, this file, this string array is going to give us uh, the absolute path to the file that uh, the user is trying to drop. Now the question is, how do we actually load that? So that's when we go back to the processor side. And currently we have, if we go down here, not quite sure why it's doing that. I'm just going to build this really quick, make sure I don't have any. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's just a erroneous, erroneous error. So uh, at the moment, we have this load file method that uh, is normally called by a button that we would do normally press. And what it would do is it would allow the user to choose a file where we get the result of that. We create a reader for it which allows us to create an audio stream from the file, and then we load it up into our sampler. Okay, so this type of behavior, this, this code is pretty close to what we need, but we just now need to get the absolute, the, the absolute path. We actually need to load that as a new file object. Okay, so what we could do is we could create another load file. So we have one called load file, right, already. But what we could do is we could create another load file that creates a different type of argument, uh, that takes a different type of argument. We'll make this a const, this const, because we just want to read the string. We don't actually want to uh, change it or anything, right? So that's why we make it const. We make it const whenever we can. So we could just say const string and this is a string reference we don't need to create a copy of the string we just want to see what we just want to take a reference to the string and uh, we'll just call this path uh, path and what I could do is I could just implement this here where we say void and we will do load file and then bring my reference over here. And then here, we could just do a lot of what we've done here. So what's really cool is that if we go to our documentation here, go into our file class reference, we will see that we have one type of constructor that takes nothing. And we have another type of constructor that will take the string of the absolute path, which is really cool. So that's really convenient. We have the UI that's going to get us the string. And now we just need to get that data over into uh, our processor. OK, so what I could do is I could just take this behavior that we have from before. So we could say auto file equals um, so this is a new file object where we take the path that we're getting from the UI. And then all of this stuff is, is pretty much the same, isn't it? So we got that where we create the reader for it. And then we do where we set the range for the MIDI keys and we add it as a sound. Okay. So that is fine. Right. But there's one little thing that we need to do, uh, which is that 
when we, if we don't clear out the sounds of our sampler, it's just going to add another sound. It's not going to clear out the other one or replace it. So what we could do here is we could just fix that by saying clear sounds. All right, and I can do that down here, up here as well, because if we want to do, if we want to do, uh, want to go back to this button and have an option where the user could hit a load dialog by hitting a load button or drag and dropping it, uh, we need to clear the sounds out before they load the new sound. So, so now we have the load file is implemented, and now we can just we can just go back here because remember we have this reference to our processor here. So now we can use that to actually just go processor and then load, load file and file. This should actually be file, not files, not the whole string array. Okay. So that is our functionality there that allows us that will actually load the new sound into our sampler. So wouldn't it be cool if we had, we just created something very simple for our UI to do that reacts when the file is actually uh, loaded up. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll just comment out the load button for now. And now let's just go to our actual background itself. I'm just going to get rid of all this. So let's start off with a black background. And then let's just set, uh, so we'll say roughly in pseudocode, if uh, we have a sound, then we would say sound loaded, right? Or else uh, we could say load a sound. Right, so that's that's what we're roughly looking for. So now there's the question: How can we tell if a sound is loaded into our sampler? Right, we don't we don't have any logic for that at the moment. Uh, what we could do is we could go back to our processor and we could do a getter, right, where we get the status of our sampler because we have this method that's called where we say sampler get get num sounds, I think it's called. So, uh, so we will do, uh, we will do a return type of int and we will say, get, we'll call this method, get num sampler sounds. And then what we do is we can just say return and then sampler get num sounds. So that will give us the number of sounds in our sampler. If there aren't any sounds in the sampler, then uh, we know that a sound isn't loaded at the moment. Okay, so now once again, we could use our processor reference to actually access that method. And we could say, if processor get num sampler sounds greater than zero, Right. If it's greater than zero, then we know we have a sound, right? Then let's say we want to, we'll color the screen red. Then we can uh, write some text on there, right? So we could say uh, we want to set the font height So we'll set it to, let's just say 15. Mm -hmm. We need to set the actual color to white. Okay, because it's it would start off as, in this case, as red. And then we could just say draw text. And we will say sound loaded. 
we will put this the best that we can on the fly here in the middle of the screen. So I'll say get width divided by two, push, push this in the middle of the screen, minus 50, get height divided by two, minus, let's just say 10. And then we will make this 100 and 20. And we will set the justification of our text to the center. Okay, and then we could say else. And then we just want the same sort of thing here, except we want load a sound. All right, so now I can pull the set, the set color of the text and the, and the height of the text to the outside of this if loop. Sorry about my dog. There we go. And then now we should be fine. And then all we need to do is just when the file is dropped, we can actually just call repaint here, which automatically calls paint when it gets the chance. So that should be good to go now. So let's go ahead and build this and see if we actually have it. So now we can go here, we'll load up our plugin called Hello Sampler. <laughs> My dog's toast is chiming in. Uh, so there we go. We have load a sound here on a black background. And so now we have a little saw sound here we can drag on. And now the sound is loaded. It loads the, the sound loaded dialog, colors the screen red. And now it plays. So there you go. So that's drag and drop functionality. Just to show you really quick, uh, there are actually a few ways that you can actually implement drag and drop functionality and a few things that you can do. Uh, for example, uh, I'll just go through one thing. You have this file name component here where it will actually, when you drag it on, it'll actually show the file name in a text box and you can, um, you can actually edit it and everything. So, but there's there's a couple different ways that you can actually uh, implement implement the drag and drop functionality. But this one happens to be the easiest. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and all that business. And I will see you next time.